Okay, so we are starting our little chit chat with uh, Dr. Young at his home office in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, this is 7th of October 2024. November. November 2024 in the afternoon. My first uh, question to you, Dr. Young, is I uh, recently uh, knew that you have retired. Is there anything you which you wish to have done before retirement uh, related to your work? Well, I'm looking forward to hand, handling whatever my students that followed me, and you're probably my number one student. And I'm retired. I'm going to answer the questions according to what you want to let your viewers and your readers uh, decide on how things have evolved. I started early by focusing on treating the pain generator. And you're very familiar with that because 25 years ago, you listened to my talk and you decided that you wanted to learn a little bit more. Well, I've stuck with the same story and, but I think you have advanced it beyond what I had by looking at the minute detail of the approach at, as a surgeon. So my contribution, I believe, is how to determine using the transfer amino approach to find the pain generator. And uh, it has remained steadfast for 25 years. But now that I know that you are writing a book called Mission Spine, and you've taken that concept, and you've actually developed more information based on what you heard from me. So basically, I think that my opinion is that you've advanced it beyond where I have 25 years ago. So I'm here to try to support your version. I've read your book, Mission Spine. I know about your wife who is administrator. And now after 25 years, you come back to visit me. And I'm learning some new concepts. There are a lot of concepts called UBE and transfer armor approach, treating the pain generator that I believe you've taken it beyond where I started. So I, I hope that you can just ask me what you want to know of my thoughts and then develop your own concept going forward. Yeah, I would like to ask you now about your idea of uh, sealing the annulus at the end of the surgery and uh, your work related to Ouroboros and uh, related uh, interventions. Well, there are many ways to seal the annulus. We, I use lasers, I use radio frequency, I use bipolar, I use unipolar, and the answer is it's a, going to be a combination of all the techniques that have been developed. I think you've taken it beyond where I took it back in 25 years ago when you first met me. And I see this is your book, Scientific Basis. Mm -hmm. on how I do Moody and stenosis. Yeah. Now, I don't have any I understand exactly what that is, <laughs> but I've sort of gone over your book and your Mission Spine Foundation in India has yeah. taken it beyond where I uh, tried to do, do that 25 years ago. So you recognize that treating the pain generator is going to be the key but there's good, there are multiple ways to do that. And you're, you have a lot more detailed concept in your book that I just, just recently read. And I think here I want to support what you want to do as far as taking it further beyond where I started 25 years ago. Regarding the pain generators, I remember you have a patent related to a dorsalute ganglion stimulator or a similar technology. So would you please tell us something more about it? Well, unfortunately, my concept 
was taken by an entrepreneur who took my vision and tried to use um, the reimbursement uh, concepts by the U.S. government in order to get reimbursement. Okay. And she learned from me, but she's done it in such a way where she uh, tried to make it into her own concept. And now she's getting pushed back by the payers so that her, her concept, which she learned from me, is okay. now being challenged by other entrepreneurial uh, entities. So basically, that has gone down out the window because she was all about uh, using the concept to make money from Medicare. Now, you have a lot of fellows all around the world, out of which I think you have many more in China, a few more in India, and of course in South America and around. Yes. What do you think about the endoscopic spine scene uh, all around the world from your perspective sitting here? I mean, how have things changed, developed, evolved in various parts of the world? Well, my concept was to take traditional open surgery under visualization uh, using traditional post, uh, posterior approach. But it's a lot more uh, complicated than that. I developed the transferaminal approach, which has lasted for 25 years, and you were one of the first to accept that when you heard me lecture in Cambridge in England. There are a lot of other people who have followed, mostly Indian, Chinese, and Southeast Asia. But in my opinion, that your concept is a lot more detailed and probably is going to uh, be marketing or supporting the concept that it's a lot more complicated than just using a translaminar approach. I took it from an open surgery with visualization, first with the naked eye, then with the endoscope. And my concept was that if you come in through the foramen, you can actually reach the pain generators like the dorsal root ganglion. And the um, concept of decompressing from above, which we all learn with open surgery. But I think that you have detailed it in such a way that uh, there can be multiple approaches. And I think that your vision in your mission spine book is going to yeah. probably be accepted uh, in detail more. But it's going to be a lot more complicated. So most people are going to revert back to how they learn mm -hmm. with open surgery. But you have taken it beyond that. However, by doing that, it is so complicated, it's going to maybe take 10, 15 years before it's truly uh, accepted globally. Yeah. But I, I want to credit you and compliment you for taking what you learned from me and actually develop it further in a lot more detail. So the concept is, is it important to know all the details or just know the concept? I think uh, after solving to a large extent, the problem related to disc herniations. All of us have devoted a lot of uh, effort and work on the cadavers to stenosis and to the real indicated fusions. So I would like your opinion about the newer technologies which are coming, where people are talking of uh, doing fusions going through the Cambian Strangle and the various technologies right from between to peak cages to expandable cages to BAK cages and many other uh, spine jack and so many others. So what's your uh, opinion on the use of interdiscal or intervertebral cage for spacer as a spacer or for fusion? Well, I like to try to simplify it. 
I learned that the pain initially comes as we age and it starts in the disc itself okay and how you evolve that concept is going to depend on the surgeon or the person adopting that concept it could be surgery it could be pain management it could be radiology and each one is going to have a different background so they're going to have different emphasis yeah. but i consider myself a spine surgeon so i'm looking at that from the vision of a spine surgeon using traditional techniques of decompression which starts posterior then go anterior and transitioning to transferaminal. I think transferaminal approach has the least cause of damage for normal tissue, but it also depends on visualization through an endoscope, through the concept, through um, the technique, through the, using lasers, using conopapine, using all the technologies that have preceded us but there's no one way to do it. Each surgeon, each person treating their patient is going to try to find the least invasive, least destructive approach in order to convince their followers. Like you're gonna have your own followers yeah. from India. And I think you have taken it beyond where I started 25 years ago to the point where it all depends on how many people follow you and and uh, look at your concept and how long it's going to take for them to accept it for their own patients because we are are taking care of patients and we all want to do the least collateral damage when we do surgery and right now in my opinion and I think I see that your concept is the transfer arm approach is the most flexible uh, I think all of us have, uh, if we go back in time, then uh, 25 years back when I visited you and learned transferamical endoscopy from you, we used to say in those days as today we are at a stage where arthroscopy was in 1980s. Now looking back and looking forward, what do you think is the uh, future of transferaminal surgery in the short term and in the long term? I think in the short term, you and I have the same concept that we want to do the least damage, but we want to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And with traditional surgery, you have to restart dorsally and we go ventrally. And then the concept is stay inside the disc, but a lot of pathology is outside the disc, so you have to account for that you want to still do the least amount of damage to normal tissue. And it's going to vary depending on the person, maybe the, the ethnicity of the, the patient, so that we are tr all trying to preserve as much the, the anatomy that we were born with. So when we were born, the pain as we age is gonna come from inside the disc. Then when we go outside, there's going to be multiple steps to get there. Your concept is very detailed, so it might take 10, 20 years for it to be universally accepted, but it doesn't mean that the other approaches are not good. We're going to have to start somewhere, but we cannot have one approach fits, fits all. So the concept is it's going to depend on who adopts your your vision, your technique, and who's going to take it beyond uh, when you know you are retired and gone. I've done. I've focused my concept for 25 years, and you have validated the fact that there is some merit to that. But the whole concept is do the least damage. Start with what we were born with. And we are all born with practically normal disc. If we're not, if uh, we're looking at the average cause, but just like um, in deformities in pediatric surgery, people are born with different anatomies. So we have to be able to recognize that and work our way around it. 
Uh, now, the last question is, uh, there is a very, very large number of young spine surgeons who are just getting out of the college or their fellowships, or at the same time, a lot of PGs, postgraduates. Uh, when I interact with them, they say that, sir, we understand that when I would go into private practice, I will have to compete with people like you and your concepts work in practice. But I need to also follow my professor who teaches me the old traditional principles of surgery where I do a wide laminectomy and retract the muscles and all that. So what would be your suggestion to overcome this paradox where we know what works, but we are meant to follow what lies in the books, which apparently is not up to date? Well, here, here's my simple answer. Whoever trained you, if you accept their concept, if you learn from them, you're going to start there. But as far as deviating from what your professors taught you, you have to take that on your own and you have to agree or disagree that you want to use the least invasive technique to treat the condition that your patient has. No one person, we're not like, like uh, computers. We're different. An Indian body may be different than a Chinese body, than a Brazilian body. And yeah. so you have to know how to account for the differences. But start with what you learn from your professors and what you accept, and then branch out from there. That's how I started. I started with very traditional surgery. But fortunately, my last year in my residency was in pediatric deformity. <laughs> so I took that and uh, tried to add to what I learned. But it's not that you need to abandon what you were taught by your teachers. You always have to respect your teachers, but then you can advance that beyond w with all the new techniques and the technologies available. Right now, everyone is talking about artificial intelligence, robots, and not every country, not every um, entity has all the fancy equipment that we can use. So we go back to what can you do for your patient from what you learn and how you're going to evolve your concept based on starting with what you learn from your own professors and then develop that. In my opinion, you've done that. You've gone beyond yeah. where I have been, but it's going to take you maybe 10 years or more for your students to follow you. It took me 25 years for you to de help develop what I, you learned from me. Yeah. So hopefully it's not going to take that, that long for you when you have your concept and you're teaching your own students from India. But the most populated countries yeah. in the most, the countries with no history is China and India. We have probably between India and China, we have maybe half the world's population. <laughs> yeah, true. So it's a matter of teaching you know, your students, how to l learn from you and, and de decide which direction they're going to go. Okay, I would not ask any question anymore. I just want you to say, if you feel I have not asked you about, or as a message to the beginners and young spine surgeons who are looking forward to join the bandwagon of spine endoscopy. Okay. I can only relate back to how I got started. And I want to credit you for taking what you learned from me and expanding it in more detail. But how important that is, it's going to be different because not, not every human being is going to be created like a robot, okay? So you have to account for the, for the differences. For instance, with cancer and with deformities, you have to recognize those who are different and how you're going to handle that. Okay, but you have to start from the beginning and start with the basics. For me, I start in the disc. We're all born with normal disc unless you have a deformity that requires us to recognize that and how to work around it. 
Okay, I would stop here. I wish you a happy birthday, upcoming birthday in the month of December. I think you will be completing 82 years of your life. And I wish you all the health. And I wish that we meet again very soon. And we together and with our group contribute to the health of people by innovating further. Well, I want Thank to you. compliment you because of all my students, you have taken what I started with and you've actually advanced beyond that. Now it's a matter of how many of your students are going to follow your concept and develop it further. Yep. Thank you. I'll stop now. Thanks, Satish.